ڈیزیز They are among the most contagious diseases. Uh, more than 65 million Americans uh, have been are incurable STDs. And each year, 20 million new cases have been reported for this. Half of these infections are among people between the ages of this young uh, 15 to 24, and they can have long-term consequences. STDs are very serious illnesses because they can require treatment. Some STDs such as HIV cannot be cured and can be deadly. And by learning more of the, about the STDs, you can learn how to protect yourself or the community or your patients. You can get the STD from vaginal, anal or oral sex. You can have this infected with the trichomoniasis through contact with the damp, moist objects, especially these wet towels, wet clothing and the uh, toilet seats, especially these are, uh, nowadays it's very humid uh, environment that can also cultivate this <clears throat> trichomonas chlamydia in your, these are high risk. If you have, uh, especially the high risk patients are those who have more than one sex partner, you have sex with someone who has health, many partners or you don't use a condom when using um, having sex. You share needles when injecting IV drugs or you trade sex for the money or the drugs. So these are the uh, important um, aspects of the sexually transmitted diseases. <clears throat> Um, chronic conditions that can be managed but, but not cured. So uh, few of them can lead to even tertiary, uh, secondary or tertiary stages that can be uh, uh, very uh, lethal and dangerous. And so um, we used to think STDs are almost are uh, gone from the society. But once I started my dermatology career, uh, I found so many patients of STDs uh, which were coming to us uh, with so many um, things and they don't uh, accept it. Uh, once you ask their history or you examine them or you tell them about the disease, they will not uh, accept it. So this is um, very uh, difficult to, uh, especially once you tell them you have this sexually transmitted disease, they won't accept it. And they won't uh, even go for uh, the other partner to be treated. So it is a bit difficult to treat in uh, Pakistan especially people are so much uh, get angry once you tell them that's a sexual transmitted disease. Now we come to the <clears throat> this uh, slide. This, uh, what are sexually transmitted infections? Sexually transmitted infections or STIs are due to bacterial, viral, fungal or parasitic infections passed on during the sexual activity or uh, by uh, some other route. But uh, this is very important because bacterial, viral, and fungal and parasitic infections are the main reasons uh, which we are going to discuss today. Uh, we have already few of them. We of, uh, I don't have that time, uh, too much time that I can share you all topics again. But uh, I have uh, discussed those topics which we never touched it because these... Uh, Viral in viral we have even discussed this AIDS, but genital herpes we have already discussed genital warts we have discussed um, in our viral infections. This bacterial in syphilis, gonorrhea, non-gonorrheal uteritis, chancroid, and non-specific vaginitis and granulomanguinal we have not discussed them before. So trichomonas vaginitis and urethritis is almost discussed with you in gynecology, and scabies and pediculosis pubis we have discussed in um, our parasitic infections and vaginal thrush and vulvovaginitis. These are all the topics which we cover in gynecology uh, almost. So we are going to touch those topics which we never uh, discussed before. Uh, and these are important regarding your exams. So what conditions are considered to be STIs? The following conditions are considered STIs. Some may also have transmitted non-sexually bacterial vaginosis, genital warts, genital herpes, chancroid, chlamydia, granuloma inguinal, 
gonorrhea. These are all uh, the infections which are caused by um, this uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Even hepatitis B and C also is included in this. And HIV infection, lymphogranuloma venerium, molluscum contagiosum, which we have discussed already, pubic lice, crabs, or the syphilis, and trichomoniasis. So these are the main uh, infections. Now, how the patient will present to you with the symptoms. The symptoms will be different in female and male, but we are going to discuss them one by one. Sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted infections, STIs ha can have a range of signs and symptoms, including no symptoms. That is why they may go unnoticed until the complications occur or a partner diagnose. So it is very important because first of them, you know, the uh, start of the disease, they don't have any uh, proper um, symptoms. May they unnotice it or maybe they don't uh, realize it and then this will lead to complications and signs and symptoms that might indicate is, uh, include sores or bumps on the genital or in the oral or rectal area. Sores or bumps means sores are the ulcers. Bumps means they have uh, lymph node enlarged or um, the swellings in the uh, areas where it is located. So painful or the burning urination Discharge from the penis and unusual or odd smelling vaginal discharge, unusual vaginal bleeding. These are the all symptoms which present to you with the uh, patient. It's pain during sex and the swollen lymph nodes and particularly in the groin, but sometimes more widespread. Lower abdominal pain, fever, rash over the trunk, hands and the feet. Once the lymph nodes are uh, swollen, then it means it's spread to the whole body through the blood and it will uh, give the all sign symptoms of the any disease. So this will uh, even present with the viremia or even the uh, bacterial infection. So signs and symptoms may appear a few days after the exposure or it may take years before you have any noticeable problems depending on the organism. Now, what are the signs of uh, sexually transmitted disease? Sexually transmitted disease can result in the following symptoms. Discharge from the penis or vagina, pain when passing urine, pelvic or the genital pain, lumps or swelling in the genital area, genital ulcers, genital rashes, and anal symptoms relating to the sexual intercourse. And however, not all the sexually transmitted infections have symptoms. See your doctor or the sexual health service after about two weeks if you have any of these of the symptoms or after unprotected sex or the change in the partner. So these are important points. And transmission from mother to infant, this is also an important question uh, usually asked in the uh, VIVA or in uh, your written exams. Uh, in MCQs, uh, this uh, few of them is gonorrhea, uh, chlamydia, HIV, and syphilis can pass from infected mother, mother to other uh, child during pregnancy or delivery. STIs in infants can cause serious problems or even death. Because this, uh, even this simple chlamydia can cause so many uh, different things in the uh, children which born by the uh, infected mother. All pregnant women should be screened for these infections and treated. So this is important. What are the complications? Because many people in the early stages of sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted infection experience the symptoms. Screening for STI is important in preventing the complications. So uh, cure it is main cure is the prevention. So possible complications include the pelvic pain, pregnancy complications, eye inflammation, arthritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, infertility, and heart disease and certain cancers such as HPV associated cervical or rectal cancers. So these are important because uh, once you have this uh, during pregnancy, these complications will come and the kid will have these all uh, infections. And then uh, if it is um, repeated infections of uh, trichomonas or even um, vulvovaginitis or this um, other infections than pelvic inflammatory disease in uh, mandatory. Then this um, lead to this infertility. So these are important complications. And now we come to the chancroid. What is chancroid? Chancroid is a sexually transmitted infection. 
caused by the small fastidious gram negative bacterium hemophilus deuterii it is uh, characterized by painful genital ulcers and painful swollen lymph glands in the inguinal area you can see the inguinal area of a patient which is having these ulcers and this um, a bit you can see the bit swollen areas here on the genital area because this will have usually this lymph node enlargement and swollen and then this uh, first of all this will be painful genital ulcer this you see this three genital painful ulcers on the uh, inguinal area and on the genital portion what will be the symptoms of this patient the symptoms vary in men and women but typically they begin four to seven days after exposure so after the four to seven days of exposure, they will bring uh, these uh, complaints. The main uh, men is uh, having this uh, notice a small red bump on their genital that may be changed to an open sore within three or two. And the ulcer may uh, form on any area of the genitals, which I have already shown you, including the penis and the scrotum. The ulcers are frequently painful. It, you have to distinguish between the other um, diseases by their presentation. The patient have painless ulcers and painful ulcers. The painful ulcer is in the chancroid. Women may have <clears throat> may develop four or more red bumps on the labia, between the labia and the anus or on the thighs. The labia are the fold of the skin that cover the female genitals and these are the main uh, area where they get these um, ulcers. And then after the bumps become ulcerated and open and my uh, woman may experience a burning or painful sensation during urination and ball movements. So these are the main important symptoms of the patients. Then additional symptoms in men and women which can be combined or common between them. The following symptoms can occur in both men and women. The ulcers can vary in size and are usually anywhere from 1 to 8 to 2 inches across. And the ulcers have a soft center that's gray to yellowish gray with defined a sharp edges. Because you have seen this ulcer, this have sharp edges. It's not an irregular margin or something. It's a very uh, secular and uh, regular margin. The ulcers may bleed easily if touched, and pain may occur during the sexual intercourse or while urinating. Swelling in the groin, which is where the lower abdominal and th thigh meet, may occur, and they will present with the even lower abdominal pain. Swollen lymph nodes uh, can break through the skin and lead to large abscesses and collections of pus that train. So these are important points uh, to be noticed once a patient asks because this history is very important in any patient that will uh, give you diagnosis even on history and then examination. How we are going to diagnose again the history is important and the uh, then rest of the uh, lab diagnosis. The diagnosing the condition may involve taking samples of the fluids that drain from the sore. So important is the these um, sore or ulcers you will have this fluid and you just take that for the sample and then sample is sent to the lab laboratory for the uh, analysis and diagnosing the chancroid currently is possible through the blood testing. But the examination of the lymph node in the groin for swelling and the pain is very important. So we are going to diagnose it by uh, history and examination. How we are going to treat it? Medication is the antibiotics to kill the bacteria that are causing by, uh, for your ulcer. Antibiotic may also help decrease the chances of scarring as ulcer heals. And made, uh, surgery can may drain a large or painful abscess in the lymph nodes with a needle or through surgery and that reduces the swelling and the pain as the sore heals but might cause some little scarring at the site. So uh, these uh, two type of treatments, especially the infection can be cured by the medication because this is caused by this hemophilus duprei. <clears throat> now we come to uh, granuloma inguinae. Granuloma inguinale is a sexually transmitted caused by bacteria previously called Calamatobacterium granulomatosis and is now reclassified as a Klebsiella granulomatosis. Uh, and it is also called denovenosis from denovenan bodies, which are cellular component uh, that are seen when scrapping from the genital skin layers are viewed under the microscope. So this will present in this manner. This uh, you can see this ulcer. Uh, 
uh, a bit um, this uh, once you will take the samples, you will find the novel bodies. This is a good question in your MCQs uh, about the granuloma inguinate. So you keep remember this, uh, this uh, the novenosis. This is important, and then this uh, Klebsiella granulomatis. This, this in, uh, caused by this infection. The risk of disease, sexually active people are at risk of getting granuloma inguinale and the peak incidence is between 20 to 40 years of age. Vertical transmission during childbirth can also occur from contact with the bacteria in the genital tract. So a pregnant woman can transfer this disease to uh, a newborn. A small minority of people, mainly children, may be infected from direct skin to skin contact with the patient. <coughs> What are the signs and symptoms? The time from exposure to bacteria to development of signs and symptoms of the granuloma inguinale has not been well defined. The reported median is 50 days, but it can vary from few days to up to a year. The initial lien is usually a firm papule or a subcutaneous nodule at the site of the contact that later ulcerate. And the areas most commonly affected are the penis, corner, corona, or glands or pupils, and the vulva, labia minora, or the foshit and anal area, which may be more common in men because this uh, is common in homosexuals. Then, what are the types of this uh, granuloma inguinale? These have uh, present in uh, multiple uh, types. This have almost five types. Uh, it can present in a nodular manner. The nodular type of granuloma inguinale is less common, means it has a nodule. But also vegetative uh, type is consists of mixture of papules, nodules that have soft and red and also some granulation tissue. Hypertrophic type is verrucous type. The hypertrophic type of hydroloma inguinale nail consists of large vegetating masses, which has been described as a walnut appearance. And the, uh, you have seen this case uh, in um, necrotic type consists of deep foul swelling ulcer. Cicatricial type granuloma inguinal consists of extensive plaque of the scar tissue. This I have shown you in the uh, initial first picture that was almost hypertrophic or ulcer vegetative writing. Um, <clears throat> this one. You can see this ulcer is ulcer vegetative writing or simple ulcer. Uh, then we come to the types. So these five types are important. You have to recall their names. If this comes in the MCQs or uh, that uh, question comes in a um, in, um, uh, SC question, then you can diagnose this patient with these uh, varieties. And uh, they can ask you how, how many types of the varieties are there. So you have to uh, recall them. Then how we are going to diagnose this patient. In early stages, it may be difficult to differentiate it from Shankoid. In the later stages, it may look like lymphogranuloma venarium. It may also be confused with other conditions such as penile or valvular cancers, genital herpes or syphilis. It, this, you, you have to differentiate between these all diseases. It it's also comes in the differential diagnosis. You have to diagnose uh, it, uh, among the other sexually transmitted disease. The lab diagnosis is made by direct microscopy of gems or strain crushed uh, tissue smear looking for the characteristic denominant bodies and by histological examination of the tissue biopsy. And then culture is very difficult. Nucleic acid amplification test or the routinely available and this serology testing is not useful. So these are the main tests which we are going to do uh, in those. First of all, the ulcer or this, we have to take their fluid to take them for the histological examination of the tissue biopsy. These are the important tests in any sexually transmitted disease if we found the ulcer. Then treatment for the granuloma inguinal. How we are going to treat it by antibiotics like tetracycline or macrolide, erythromycin, any type of an, uh, antibiotic can be given. Streptomycin or ampicillin may also be used for most treatments are prescribed for three weeks, although they will continue until the infection is cured. Early treatment is advised to prevent the permanent scarring and the swelling in the genital, anal or inguinal areas. After you have treated, you need to have routine examination to ensure that infection does not come back. And in some cases, it reoccurs after it seems to be cured. 
So uh, the follow-up of a patient is very important for the sexually transmitted disease. Even uh, if uh, any patient is having sexually transmitted disease, they are not going abroad because uh, they usually uh, check for these um, infections, especially in the Saudi Arabia or somewhere because uh, so many patients have come to me because of this sexually transmitted disease uh, to rule out this infection and then treat it and then to go to abroad. Uh, usually they uh, refuse their visas. So gonorrhea, now we come to the gonorrhea. Uh, acute infectious uh, sexually transmitted diseases which can become chronic if neglected. Neisseria gonorrhea or gonococcus delicate gram-negative intracellular diplococcus that perishes rapidly outside the body. Well, who is the reservoir is the man. Who is infection for uh, who is infection for months or years if not treated? While treatment eliminates the infection within days, <clears throat> discharges of the infected mucous membranes. This is important. Uh, it's exit and then transmission direct sexual contact only and the incubation period is three to four days. Gonorrhea is basically a gram-negative infection. Neisseria gonorrhea. You should re remember this uh, infection. Uh, this incubation period is three to four days. It starts as an acute infection and if not properly treated, it becomes chronic. So uh, it's important because if a patient is not treated properly at the time, then it will prove chronic city or maybe with the complications. In male, the urethritis with purulent discharge. In female, the urethritis and cervicitis with the discharges. You see this penile discharge, vaginal discharge is the common between these. And then uh, burning painful urination and burning painful urination both in the male and female. Arthritis, pharyngitis, rectal infection, septicemia, endocarditis, or meningitis may occur in both sexes for, after the chronicity or the uh, complication as a complication of this patient. So, uh, uh, this can lead to these uh, very uh, dangerous things which can come. And then, we, how we are going to diagnose history and the clinical picture. Lab investigations, the acute case demonstration of causative organism from film of pus taken from the cervix or the urethra and then chronic cases the serological testing such as complement fixation test is important how we are going to diagnose is by these the history and clinical picture is very important you have to rule out by these history and clinical picture of any disease any type of disease you will diagnose it by history so the uh, you know the idea how to uh, take the history this is important in any patient what is the treatment? Amoxicillin 3 gram orally or a single dose or maybe penicillin resistant strains will uh, go for the ceftraxone 250 mg as a single dose or as a azithromycin uh, or toxicycline. So we can give any type of drug. If patient is uh, having this penicillin um, allergy, then we will go for the azithromycin or toxicycline. Now we come to the syphilis. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by spirochete triponomal pallidum. Syphilis can cause um, many signs and symptoms uh, similar to other diseases, including the HIV, and thus its nickname is great imitator. This will uh, have a clinical picture of every type of disease. You will even found even drug reactions and anything. You will confuse with these uh, syphilis with other diseases. Syphilis has a symptomatic or asymptomatic stages. And if left untreated, syphilis can have significant consequences to infect the individual's long-term neurological or cardiac diseases, to pregnancy, stillbirth, or congenital infections. And even a uh, patient uh, having a syphilis, uh, uh, syphilitic stage or pubic health infection ongoing spread in the population as well. So this um, syphilis is very, um, uh, we used to think it's an obsolete disease, but once we were in dermatology, we found so many syphilitic patients uh, with us and, um, and so many patients in community especially. Uh, <clears throat> Signs and symptoms, once infected with the syphilis, an incubation period is 10 to 90 days, average 21 days, ensues before signs become apparent. Untreated syphilis passes through the distinct clinical symptomatic stages as well as the latent asymptomatic stage. During latency, diagnosis can only be made by serology. During this clinical stage, signs and symptoms of the syphilis differ according to the stages, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So, 
how we uh, we're going to learn them one by one. Primary syphilis represent typically a solitary or a small, firm, red, painless papule on the genital area, become a painless ulcer with a well-defined margin and indurated base. Because of its painless ulcer, people usually neglect this and this will lead to complications and other uh, secondary stage. They will go to secondary stage. So multiple chancres occur in 30% of cases, but you usually find only a uh, single or multiple um, uh, ulcers, maybe on the genital or on the oral cavity. The initial ulcerated chancre may go unnoticed, particularly if hidden inside the vagina, cervix of mouth or in the anal region. Non-tenderly fedinopathy occur in the region. So this is also not a painful, so the patient don't bother to come to the doctor for of ulceration. Inguinal lymphadenopathy in ulcers on the genitals or the cervical lymphadenopathy with ulcers in the mouth. Ulcers usually heal without treatment within a few weeks. So the patient don't bother to come to the doctors in the primary syphilis. A few of the patients are very uh, cautious, so they try to come to the uh, doctors. Otherwise, they don't bother it. And even you ask the history, they will uh, not uh, uh, tell you the, about clear history of the patient and uh, they will not tell you about any uh, sign symptoms properly. So this is uh, in, especially in our country, this is a, uh, we have to rule out by ourselves. So this, these two ulcers you can see. In secondary syphilis, how will it will be present? Secondary syphilis becomes generalized. Secondary syphilis is characterized by rash and systemic symptoms. During which the patient is very infectious. Once it is in secondary, uh, uh, then it is, oh, as usual, the time is running out. Okay. Um, when the secondary syphilis is characterized by rash or systemic symptoms during which the patient is very infectious, the patient is untreated and these symptoms will eventually resolve over the number of weeks, but they can reoccur. So the patient will present with you uh, in this, uh, you can see this uh, as if it is drug reaction on the hands, but these are very contagious and they, they will give you even by shaking hand only simply. So um, in few diseases, you if you should shake hand and you will get this disease by the patient. Syphilis is multi-system infection and the patient uh, is very, um, very infectious during this stage. Systemic symptoms may include fever, headache, malaise, myalgia, arthralgia, lymphadenopathy and other affected organs can include the liver, kidney, central nervous system and cranial nerve palsies, meningitis, joints and the eye resulting in visual impairment. So these are the all uh, systemic symptoms which we are going to see. And now we come to the uh, tertiary, uh, latent uh, syphilis. Between the secondary and the tertiary clinical stage of syphilis, many years of latency ensues. The latent um, years are subdivided into early and late. During the latency, the patient is asymptomatic with no clinical signs or symptoms. No ex um, therefore, continued syphilis infection will only be found by positive triponemal antibody test. The infectiousness varies and describes now we come to early latent syphilis. The patient is very infectious. Syphilis infection can pass to sexual partners and syphilis infections can pass from pregnant woman to her fetus. So this is important in the early um, the latent period. And then this late latent is after two years. Only certain patients remain infectious and the patient is non-infectious to the sexual partner and syphilis infection can still pass from pregnant woman to the fetus. So it is a very dangerous disease. It will not tell you about the clearness of this patient. The tertiary syphilis is very delayed uh, uh, and occurring decades after the initial infection and late signs and symptoms can develop 20 to 40 years after the initial infection up to one third of the untreated cases. The untreated infection can lead to end arthritis and complications like gamma, cardiovascular or neurological disease and we have seen few patients with the gamma and cardiovascular and neurological diseases. Gamma is a solitary granulomatous uh, layer with central necrosis. Gammas typically occur on the skin or the bone, but can be found anywhere, even on the face. Skin gammas can be painless, and but gammas and long bones can cause deep, boring pain that is worse at night. So, because the infection is there. 
In just this, if cardiovascular disease is rare complication, aorta is the most likely organ affected and they become dilated and resulting in aortic aneurysm and the aortic regurgitation. So these, uh, the tertiary syphilis will uh, having this cardiovascular disease and neurosyphilis can present in a meningovascular disease and uh, and arthritis or leading to ischemic strokes or the general uh, paresis neuronal loss in the cortex leading to progressive dementia as a tabis dorsalis wasting away of the spinal cord. So this um, can lead to very um, disastrous effects of uh, this uh, syphilis if it is untreated. So we are going to see this by um, this picture. Uh, you will recall that by primary scandrian latent tertiary. Uh, th this is basically primary shanker. You have seen this. With, it is painless. Primary syphilis, then scandry, which uh, is involving this all even hands, lungs, skin, as well as eye, and this cornea. This um, you can see this on the liver, and this latent, early latent, late, and this this late tertiary with the neurosyphilis gammas and this all. You can see the gamma is on the forehead. How we are going to diagnose? Syphilis can be diagnosed by demonstrating triponemal pallidum spirochetes in the uh, field microscope. Your triponemal polymerase chains as PCR testing. Then skin biopsy and serological testing are important. Few serological test is non-specific test and the specific. In non-specific venereal disease, this is BDRL and the RPR test is important. Then uh, we will come to the specific test. Uh, the specific tests include the uh, immu uh, enzyme immunoassay and the trypon uh, tryponema pallidum hemagglutination TPHA and this uh, TPPA tryponema pallidum particle agglutination assay. So these are the tests you have to recall them and uh, remember it. And treatment of the syphilis is penicillin by injection and still the mainstay of the treatment for the all stages of syphilis. Infectious syphilis requires a stab dose of benzathin or procaine penicillin. Uh, then non-infectious syphilis we require this benzathin and procaine penicillin. Then again, we have so many um, there. Uh, even uh, you will find their um, dosages. The other antibiotics are less reliable, like tetracycline, cephalosporin can also be used for the patient who are allergic to penicillin. A pregnant woman who is allergic to penicillin should be given or desensitized and then treated with the penicillin. Anyway. Uh, now we come to this. Um, AIDS. It's a life-threatening clinical condition that represents the late clinical stage of infections with the HIV and causative agent is you know um, RNA virus, retrovirus and serological geographically distinct types of similar epidemiological characteristics. HIV-1 is found in America, Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. HIV-2 is found mainly in the West Africa. Uh, now we come to the uh, reservoir is man and it, it exists in the blood, body fluids, even semen, vaginal secretion, saliva and tears. So the period of communicability is uh, so uh, long that the infected person is alive. Uh, incubation period variable from 50% of infection uh, develops AIDS about 10 years after uh, their age. And then we come to this uh, modes of uh, infection, how it is going to be transferred by sexual contact, parental infection, con contaminated syringes and needles, then prenatal transmission from 25 to 35% of infants born to the infected mothers are infected before, during, shortly after the birth. So classification of cutaneous lesions in HIV is the infectious in herpes zoster, herpes simplex, Cryptococcus, histoplasmosis, HIV, uh, human papilloma virus, and then impetigo, lymphogranuloma venarium, lescum contagiosum, syphilis, franclosis, folliculitis, uh, pyomyositis, and superficial fungal infections, like posi sarcoma is neoplastic, and lymphoma, wild squamous cell carcinoma. These are the neoplastic lesions which we will see in the HIV lesions. Mm, then, uh, Others is the proritic papular eruption, eosinophilic folliculitis, subric dermatitis, uh, drug eruption, vasculitis, choices, hyperpigmentations, photodermatitis, atopic dermatitis, and hair changes. These are all uh, the cutaneous lesions in HIV, which we will see or come across with the patients. Specific indicator of disease, opportunistic infections, pneumocystitis, carinae, and pneumonia, and the chronic 
cryptosporidiosis or CNS toxoplasmosis, neurological diseases, dementia, sensory neuropathy, Kaposi sarcoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, other pulmonary or extra pulmonary tuberculosis. Mm, uh, we conducted a, uh, a, 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 a in our uh, the dermatology department uh, by some NGO. They had taken the test of uh, many patients uh, randomly, not by saying they uh, having HIV infections. They took almost 2,000 people test and they get uh, 800 people diagnosed with HIV. So it is very common nowadays. Anybody can get this disease by anyone uh, through specially dental uh, procedures or even through these needles or you know, somewhere else. The clinical picture is uh, important in um, diagnosis and then lab investigation, serological test for HIV, ELISA, Western broad in, uh, indirect immune fluorescence, uh, assay, and then PCR test to detect HIV antigen. So these are important tests. Preventive measures is important uh, for the HIV. Uh, health education of the youth about the disease and its mode of transmission is important. And the increased religion routes to avoid illegal sex, uh, sexual intercourse. And use disposable syringes and needles. These are important. Control of drug abuse, testing blood donors for the AIDS and only screen blood and the blood derivatives should be used. And then proper sterilization and instruments or the sharp objects care in handling, using or disposing in needles and other sharp objects, no tattooing or the acupuncture. So these are important. Uh, even uh, one of our tests, uh, once we were doing house job, uh, we come across uh, in a patient with HIV, but we couldn't find any cause of the, his diseases. He was having multiple diseases which were coming in um, our mind and he was very sick and uh, very um, thin lean person we uh, didn't go for immediately for hiv test but once we were so much worried so the third uh, our teachers told that please go for the test for hiv once his test was positive and uh, we told their family uh, the patient's uh, behavior was like that he said um, uh, their attendants said uh, that uh, we already know that he is having hiv impact